Hello, and welcome to the Pastor's Desk, a devotional series. I'm Pastor Brandon, and today's topic is Halloween. Yes, it's that time of the year where everybody's dressing up in costumes and going to get candy door to door. But today my question is, is should Christians participate in Halloween? First, let's get a backstory on Halloween. Halloween originated from the ancient Druids with sacrificing humans and people disguising themselves to hide from evil spirits, then was adapted by the Catholic Church to pull in the pagans. So, in that just small brief history, we understand its origin. But am I going to stop there? No. Am I going to focus there? No. I just want you to know where Halloween originated, okay? <clears throat> but let's get a couple comments here. One is from a Satanist. I'm glad that Christian parents let their children worship the devil at least one night of the year. So this is in reference to Halloween. This Satanist is glad that Christian parents are letting their children participate in Halloween. Now, do we care what a Satanist has to think? No. But to them, Halloween is one of their sacred high holy days. Okay, so let's hear from an ex-Satanist. A Christian now, thankfully. In Wicca, the occult and Satanism all look forward to Samhain, which is Halloween. It is the night that is celebrated the most. It's also a day when human sacrifice and animal sacrifice is celebrated. It's a time when you dress up like ghouls, witches, goblins, ghosts, demons, the devil, skeletons. And in my case, I've even seen strippers and prostitutes. A night of fear that is celebrated. The devil likes to dress things up and make it seem fun. But the underlying layer is evil. So this is a sat ex-Satanist who is telling Christians now, you don't need to be part of it, okay? He, matter of fact, goes on and uh, has about a two-hour session where he talks about how we shouldn't participate in Halloween. Should we stop there? Two people's opinions, doesn't really matter, okay? But I just wanted you to hear the opinions from people who used to be or was still in Satanism. But we've done it so long in our culture that it's hard for us to see us stop doing something that we've always done. Our mother or our dad and their family and their family have, have been reared in teaching that it's okay to participate in Halloween. You dress up however you want. We'll go uh, door to door. We'll get the candy. It's all fun and games. But is there an underlying secret behind Halloween? Is there an underlying evil behind Halloween? Hopefully, with this study, we'll get to the bottom of that. But a quick question. Could you see Jesus celebrating Halloween? Now, I know some of you out there are going to say, well, I couldn't see Jesus doing a lot of things. Couldn't see him driving a car. Couldn't see him playing video games. I couldn't see him watching a movie. But none of that stuff is bad. Okay? Well, actually, some of the movies and some of the video games are. Okay? And some of the ways you drive is not too good either. Okay? But yes, Jesus wouldn't have done certain things. Yes, would he have dri driven a car if that was around in his era? I believe he would have, okay? Certain things you can't see happening, but yes, Jesus, if it was, you know, around, he probably would have drove, okay? But it's not that big of a deal, okay? But would he have participated in Halloween? For example, would Jesus have made his yard look evil? Would he have ghosts, ghouls, goblins, witches, skeletons? Would he have had scary music playing for the little trick-or-treaters? No, I don't believe he would have. Now, if Jesus had kids, which we know he didn't, but if he was to have kids and Halloween season came around, would he have dressed them that way? Would he have dressed them like a witch, a skeleton, a ghoul, a goblin, a zombie, uh, Satan himself, uh, demons, uh, harlots, uh, all kind of, would Jesus have done that? And I think if most of us are honest, no, Jesus wouldn't have, right? If you're honest, I believe that Jesus wouldn't have taken part in that. Um, <clears throat> but we also see this: the ex-Satanist is telling us not to be a part of this. He says that there's a hidden agenda and a secret behind it. 
So he is warning us not to be a part of that for a reason. Because he knows that there is an underlying issue there, an underlying evil. Even if at the face value, all we see is the fun and games part, the, the candy, the, the Halloween parties, and the, uh, the scary ghost stories and the haunted houses. If we just see that just as the fun, you know, that's what the devil wants us to focus on, just the fun parts, okay? But there is an underlying evil behind it, okay? There's an underlying agenda. One, the devil wants us to get used to things that are evil. He wants us to be comfortable with things that are evil. But the Bible has a complete different picture of what we are to, be, to see evil as. Okay? And I'm going to get into that. Our first scripture is Ephesians 5.11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And that's what this teaching is about. Normally, I like to be quick with these devotionals, but this one will run a little long, but that's okay. This is a teaching that I've neglected to do because of its sensitivity. Because there's so many people out there who hold on to their traditions. They don't want to let go of them. No, this is how I've always done it. And I understand that, okay? And I'm sorry if this video offends you. Trust me, hopefully at the end of it, if you stay to the end, hopefully I'll make you feel a little bit better about it. But we have to have a clear distinction of what is evil and what is good. Is there a gray area? I don't see that. I see it black and white. I see the good and I see the evil. I don't think we should be in the middle area. Okay? This is my opinion now. But the scripture says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Yes, Halloween takes place at night. Yes, there is things that appear to be evil during Halloween. Most houses that I've ever seen has had witches, uh, devils, demons, ghosts, ghouls, goblins. Uh, the main part of it is to scare you, right? Trick or treat, scary time. Okay, that's what most people associate Halloween with. But anyway, let's keep going. 3 John 1.11 Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. We're not to imitate evil. What is the main thing about putting on a demonic or scary costume? That's imitating evil, is it not? Okay, if you're a Christian, you say, I don't do that. I don't let my kids wear evil costumes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay? You're trying to set your children apart, which that's good. But do you bring them to the houses that have that set up? Okay? Do you bring them around those kids who are dressing like that? Is there fear being involved? Yes. Does God tell us to stay away from fear? He, he, he says, I've not given you fear. He doesn't want us to have fear. We're supposed to have a sound mind. Okay, We're not to be fearful of anything. So why would you bring your kids to a situation where they will be fearful? Don't bring them to haunted houses. Don't tell them ghost stories. Don't let them watch scary movies during Halloween. God doesn't want us to be associated with fear, evil, and darkness. 1 Thessalonians 5.22 Abstain from all appearance of evil. So that goes with the costumes as well. Don't wear evil costumes. Don't bring your kids around evil costumes. Romans 12, 9. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Abhor is a hatred with disgust. When I see people wearing demonic costumes, I'm not like, oh, that's cute. I don't think that way. I think that is sick. That is sad. I hate seeing the devil being glorified. The devil is not supposed to be glorified in anything. We shouldn't wear his costumes, okay? We shouldn't wear scary costumes or anything. We shouldn't glorify evil. We should glorify good. James 1.27 Keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Don't be polluted by the world and its traditions. No, we're to be set apart. We're to be called out from the world. The world has its traditions, its ways of doing things. But we are to be different and separated from the world. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. What fellowship can light have with darkness? How can we who are light take part in dark things? 
we shouldn't as Christians. Now this might be a hard teaching for some of you, but we must go with what the Scripture says. We must go with what God would want us to do. If Jesus wouldn't be a part of that, we shouldn't either. 2 Corinthians 6.17 Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. He is, he's saying, don't be a part of this world system. Come out from among them. Be different. Be separate. Be sanctified unto me and my purposes. It might be fun to you, but what is more important? Fun or being obedient to God? You have to ask yourself that question and answer honestly. What's more important? The devil offers fun in all kinds of ways. But what's more important to you? Being obedient to God or having fun? Ask yourself that question and lead your family accordingly. I hope you make the right decision. Like I said, stay till the end. I got a lot more to say. 1 Corinthians 10.31 Whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Everything that we do in this world should be to glorify God. Would God be glorified if I dressed up my whole house uh, to scare kids and to make it look scary and played haunted music and uh, opened the door with my scary costume? Rawr! Would that glorify God? No, I don't think it would. Now, are there alternatives there is. You don't have to dress your yard up to be scary. You can dress your yard up however you want. You can dress it up to be like a Superman thing. You can dress it up to be like heaven, okay? And you can open the doors as an angel and give out angel food cakes or whatever and the gospel tracts and say, God bless you. There is a way to be separate from the world. You don't have to make it scary just because everybody else is making their yard scary. Just because that's what most people think of when they think of Halloween is scary, darkness, evil. No, you don't have to do that on that day. You can be separate as a Christian. Do something different on that day. So that people say, there is something different about this person. Colossians 3.17 And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So no matter what you do in this world, it is all to be for Him. To be in the name of Him. To be uh, whatever our word or deed, let it be all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let Him be happy with what we do for Halloween. Let's not do the, the scary thing, okay? Let's not dress up and be scary and, and try to scare kids. But no, let's, let's uh, try to glorify God. <clears throat> now, I understand that uh, some of you might be frustrated, some of you might be mad, and uh, some of you also might be unsure of what your, your role is is supposed to be in on Halloween. Uh, but I want to encourage you to make a stand now for Jesus while you still can. Make a separation for you and your family from the world and the devil. Make a clear distinction. Your children will thank you in the end. There are still many options for you to have. Have Christian-themed costume parties and Christian fall festivals. We're having a hallelujah party here. Um, you, there can still be candy, and there can still be fun, and there can still be games, and there can still be costumes. Uh, you can still be involved. Just remove all appearance of evil. Okay? We can make this day dedicated for the Lord and His purposes. We don't have to give it over to the devil and say, well, that's your one day of the year. No. All days are set aside for the Lord and His purposes. All days. But how we choose to live on that day is how we set it aside for the Lord or for the devil. I'm going to choose to set that day aside for the Lord. <clears throat> now, your argument may be, well, I don't let my kids dress up like anything scary. I just let them trick-or-treat and get candy. But while passing all the other kids with scary costumes, and let me stop right there. From 2009 to 2013, the top-selling costume was witches. Okay, Now, from places 2 to 13, it was vampires, uh, devil, ghost, zombie, vixen, which is like uh, somebody who's dressing like a harlot. And... Uh, <clears throat> So those are the, the types of costumes they're going to be seeing, okay? 
So instead of taking them trick-or-treating, take them to those fall festivals or trunk or treat that aren't themed around being scary, okay? Even churches can get it wrong. Make sure their church have set it where no scary costumes are going to be there, no demonic, no evil, no nothing evil, okay? Or, or go to the costume parties that are Christian-based where they're going as Bible characters or dressing like an angel. And I don't think there's anything wrong with dressing up like a superhero or things like that. But make sure they're they're not doing the evil stuff, okay? you got to keep your kids safe from that. Yeah, they may want to. Oh, I want to dress up like something scary, Dad. Please, Mom, come on. No, son. we got to be separate. That's what the world's doing. we got to be different. We're Christians. God has a higher standard for us, okay? But I have another question. When you think about Halloween, what comes to mind, honestly? Is it anything to do with Jesus? Or is it the devil and evil and scary things that come to mind? When somebody says Halloween to you, do you think, oh, that's Jesus, and J- Jesus' day and God's day? Well, it is, but when you think about Halloween, what is your first reaction? What is the first thing that comes to your mind? To me, if you were to say, what do you think about Halloween? Oh, that's the time where everybody dresses crazy and they're dressing in scary costumes and people are decorating their yard with scary stuff, playing uh, scary music, they're having the haunted houses, people are watching scary movies, telling ghost stories. It's, it's uh, people. There's a lot of things going crazy on Halloween. That's what I think of. But when you think about Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and all these other holidays, yeah, our thoughts are about God then. But Halloween, uh, not so much. So what do we need to do as Christians? We need to take back that day. We need to make sure that day is not going to be glorifying the devil, but glorifying God, dedicated for him and his purposes. That's how we are to live. We're to be set apart. But at the end of the day, I have to defer to the Holy Spirit's leading. Each Christian, I have to defer to him. I have to trust that he will lead each one of us in making the right decision on how we are to celebrate Halloween. I feel like I've laid out a compelling case to abstain from Halloween, at least from its the evil side of it. Um, but I do believe it is a matter of conviction as well. So I will leave you with this final scripture, 1 Corinthians 10.23. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. So yes, It might not be a sin for you and your family to participate in Halloween and dress up in evil costumes and decorate your yard in evil and all that. It may not necessarily be a sin. I don't know for sure. But it is definitely not profitable for your family. It is not useful. It's not helpful for you to take part in the evil side of things. In anything in life. Not just Halloween. But I want to to just say one last thing. If you're upset at some of the things I've said in this video, I'm sorry. I'm not here to make you upset. I'm not here to offend you. I'm not here to make you mad. I don't like making people mad. But I am here to expose darkness. And if you can't see that there's darkness and evil associated with Halloween, I'm sorry, but you had your blinders on. There is something dark about that holiday. And we as Christians have to bring the light in. If you're going to take part in Halloween, some just choose to abstain from it altogether. And I'm more closer to that camp. But I'm not saying there's no, there's nothing good that can come from it. We can look at it as a mission field. If you give out candy, give it out without decorating your yard evil and scary and playing evil music. Decorate your yard in some other Christian way if you want to. Or just neutral. And give out gospel tracts with the candy. And tell them, God bless you. Let them know that you're different than all the other houses that they go to. Let them know there's something different about you. But anyway, God bless you, and thank you for watching. Stay tuned to the next one.